Welcome to the Confidence in Singing podcast, where you can reclaim your voice and rediscover the joy of singing. I'm Aideen, and my guests include singers and voice experts who share their insights and journey to encourage singing for health, happiness, and fun. To support this podcast and join the Confidence in Singing community, just click on the patron link below. Welcome everyone to the Confidence in Singing podcast. I'm Aideen and my guest today is Meryl Hayton, who is an EFT practitioner. And she's going to explain exactly what that means in a moment. So um, Meryl isn't a professional singer, but she does help people to be seen in different ways, to stand up and to take a leadership role where necessary. And I believe that singing a song is a version of taking charge of the room um, because you're asking people to pay attention to you. So what Meryl does um, is actually very useful for singers and especially for singers that maybe lack a little bit of confidence and need to boost their confidence in order to be able to do what they love. Meryl, you're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Would you like to tell us a little bit about um, your what you work at and your your story? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm in New Jersey. I'm actually currently selling my condo and moving to the beach. So I'm very excited about that in about 10 days. Um, and uh, so I have um, a corporate accounting background and then owned a small nail salon for 30 years and became a yoga teacher and then closed my salon three years ago to become a coach. Uh, I found EFT tapping, which we will talk about and get into a little sampling of about four years ago. And it has been a game changer and a lifesaver for me, for sure, um, in healing my inner critic and healing my inner child and managing my stress and self-regulating my nervous system and the transformations that I've been you know, bringing my clients through are, it's exciting. I'm in awe of it. And it's just really incredible. Um, well, that sounds amazing because I talk <laughs> yeah. to my students a lot about finding their inner child, you know, and, and making sure that your inner child starts to feel playful again, mm -hmm. because our inner child can be so, um, it can be really hurting from the past, you know, um, yeah. we can, even I have been doing a little bit of inner child work lately about a situation where I remember my, I, I was unhappy. I was on a walk. I decided I, my hip was hurting or I was tired or something. And my mom wouldn't listen to me that I was too tired to continue walking. I was about 10. I wasn't even that small, but I was really unable to express myself. So I sat down on the floor <laughs> and basically did a sit in, you know, and my mom had just ignored me. And so the, that, that mm. would have happened more than once because she had five kids. So I was the eldest. I should have known a little bit better. Right. Um, but I think it was just the stage I was at with my life and I had a bit of forgiveness work to do around that. But, you know, we all have that inner child that when it's free and playful, it actually is a liberating and joyous experience. So anything absolutely. that helps people connect with that is awesome. Yeah, absolutely. I, um, I grew up with a feeling sad and my mom was critical. And I mean, I had a normal childhood. My, I had grew up in a nice house in a nice town with nice people. And, but still I wasn't really supported the way that I needed to be on the insides. And I didn't feel safe sharing myself or expressing my emotions. And I suppressed everything. And I had an incredible amount of negativity in my head. And I just was on this lifelong self-development journey of how do I get rid of it? Mm -hmm. Right. And it really, I mean, I did all the self-development books and all the popular things and went through regular therapy and it still was just, I was sharing, but I wasn't really healing and I wasn't, um, uh, learning tools, you know, on, on how to really help myself. Was and, there a turning point then Meryl, where you started to feel more that you could be more you, that you felt more free to be you? Yeah, it really wasn't until four years ago when I started learning about mind-body medicine and 
um, what was I really going to do with my life after I closed my salon? Uh, and, and it was, it was learning EFT and working with coaches and, you know, really learning tools, um, to, you know, to heal myself. So journaling and, you know, lots of practical mindfulness tools of, um, meditation and, um, you know, I've, I've done some, uh, kirtan, you know, chanting and, nice. um, which I love. Yeah. And, uh, you know, obviously being a yoga teacher for the last nine years, you know, that's helped and going on yoga retreats and, you know, things like that. Did you but, always have a confidence about you? I mean, if you had a, a business for, th for a long time, like you did, that must, I, that took a bit yeah. of confidence. So, but, you know, we talk about, you know, building confidence with this, um, with singing, but, um, it sounds like, um, I'm wondering if you had confidence in only certain areas of your life and how that translated. Yes, uh, absolutely. So from, nine years old, I was playing and doing my nails. I was like always creative that way. So even though I was working in corporate accounting and going to college at night and things like that, it wasn't for me. I didn't want to work for anybody else. I didn't like the nine to five thing. I wanted to do nails. I wanted to open up a salon and I was very confident about that. And I followed my passion and my dream. And I did that for a very long time. But after about 20 years, I was really burnt out. And I knew I still was like, still had all this chronic negativity and it was coming out in ways that I wasn't happy about it. Cause I would like burst out in anger and I had a chip on my shoulder and, you know, I just like was always feeling like people were judging me and it, it just was not good for my relationships. And I was not confident in my relation, my, my personal relationships, like with men and my intimate relationships. That's where I really was. I grasped for attention there and cause I was looking for validation and, um, that's really where I, I lacked, you know, uh, my confidence. That was the pain point at that time, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and then when I left my salon, you know, and so when I was in my salon, I was, a uh, highly detailed person. So I was very good at my craft. I had an incredible following for almost my whole 30 year career. Um, and, uh, yeah, I was at the top of my game in that and there, you know, I could, I felt like I could do it with my eyes closed. Right. It was just like it, easy. Mm. And then when I left that <clears throat> and I, I was going through my healing journey, learning, coaching, learning EFT, building my business all at the same time, which is a little crazy. Um, there was a lot of for a long time, I didn't feel confident because I didn't, I wasn't really fully healed. I needed to learn this new craft. I needed to hone my craft. I needed to feel confident in my craft in order to know who I can serve and how I can deliver it. Mm -hmm. And, and then you, when you get to that place, that's when your business comes together. And it took me a couple of years to really figure all that out. Uh, and, you know, build and find my confidence again. And it's, it's a new level of confidence because it's, it's, I have to express myself now. I had to dig deep and do all of this healing and right. All of the ways that I was struggling as a child, you know, and, and all my adult life with all this negativity, most of it's gone now, you know, and I Wonderful. have all this, you know, uh, EFT stands for emotional freedom technique. So it's freeing myself of all of these emotions and, all of the emotional clutter that was inside. And, you know, now, now when I have say, I mean, just the other day I had a conversation with a gentleman on the phone, I do online dating. And, um, he said, well, explain to me like how you would help someone. And I said, well, I'll just say, use myself as an example. And I can just really talk about my inner child and, you know, no problem about, you know, where I am, like, it's, it's, uh, it's very freeing. It really is very freeing. So you don't worry so much about judgments of others. No, you know, this is a really important thing for anyone who's doing singing, because part of the reason we're so afraid to use our voices is we're afraid that our voices will be judged. Right. Absolutely. So what yeah, is the solution? Absolutely. Practice. <laughs> Do you think practice, that practice and wiping out whatever is blocking you? 
So do you think that 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 feeling of I'm I'm going to be judged comes from a situation or an event that maybe happened in childhood? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So when I work with my clients, we start with, okay, their, their current situation is, you know, I feel I'm going to be judged and uh, on a scale of zero to 10, it feels like an eight. Okay. Well, we do tapping, which we'll do in a little bit. Um, and we lower that number eight down to around maybe a two. And then I'll start asking questions like, well, is this familiar to you? And people say, yes, it's familiar to me. What is your earliest memory of feeling that people are judging you? You know, and they're able to go back in their mind and they go, yeah, you know, when I was six years old <laughs> or when I was eight years old or when I was in junior high or right. They, everybody has some sort of a, um, event or situation that they can remember. And sometimes they can't remember it when they're at the eight because there's so much clutter emotionally and the energy is all blocked up, but the EFT mm -hmm. can quickly open you up and create these shifts so that your wisdom can guide you to the next place that we need to go. And that's what I help facilitate. And then when we fi figure out what the earliest memory is, we either can do a clearing tool, use a clearing tool and just wipe that event completely out. It's, they'll remember the event, but they they won't be attached to it anymore. And, you know, instead of there being intensity about the event, they'll be very just neutral about it. And that will stay forever. It doesn't come back as long as we wow. have figured out all of the uh, emotions that are attached to it. But the clearing tools can be wiped out. And um, I work with clients sometimes that have trauma and they, they say, I don't want to tell you what it is. And they don't have to. That's the beauty of EFT is I can wipe out in an event and they don't have to tell me uh, one detail about it. And um, they just remember it so themselves while you're doing will, the work. Yeah, they go through it in their mind and um, all they do is express the emotion that's attached to it or the feeling that's in their body. And we can wipe it out very quickly, like in a session. It's, when it's you talked about incredible. the feeling in your body, you mentioned earlier as well about your nervous system. Mm -hmm. Can you explain how EFT tapping works with the nervous, with your nervous system? Sure. Well, just like an acupuncturist would use needles on your energy meridian points, it's the same thing that we're doing, except we're tapping using our fingertips. And the basic recipe, I'll do it as I'm talking. Um, the basic recipe is the side of the hand and then the top of the head towards the back. And some people do both hands. I typically don't. But we're, we're targeting the main energy points by tapping on this basic recipe, they call it. Okay. And it is calming your nervous system and calming your energy and completely dismantling the attachment that you have to anything. I mean, it can be food cravings and then under the arm here, it can be food cravings. It can be, you know, uh, money blocks, singing blocks, <laughs> uh, emotional pain. I've healed myself um, working with another practitioner with gallbladder pain Um and anything under the sun, it can work on. I mean, I have a niche for my business, but I have helped people with, you know, many other things. Um, so. Do you work a lot with people who maybe need to speak or, you know, in work environments? Do you have any stories or anything that you can share about someone stepping into their power following using the techniques that you use? Even in Sure. Um, I do work with spiritual professional women. So they're all pretty much have their own business or they work in corporate America and they have a side business that they aren't confident enough to really step into yet. Right. So they're building a business. Um, they don't feel confident either writing their copy and sending that out because they have fear of judgment or they fear doing lives. Um, I helped a woman. She said, I've always kind of had a fear of speaking, but this one time I was standing up in front of a full audience of people and I was feeling pretty confident in um, what I was talking about. And then someone asked me a question and I froze. And it was, I, she said, I've never recovered from that. So we worked on it. And by the end of the session, she said, I think I feel confident enough to start practicing doing some Facebook lives and like, 
doing a Facebook live to like a group with nobody, like so that she could practice it or send it to her family or something like that, you know? Yeah. And then I think starting small is, is the way to go, you know? Um, and, uh, yeah. 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 Great. So, so I mean, my tell clients... us a little bit about your journey with singing. Cause you mentioned that you <clears> do <throat> enjoy singing from time to time. You know, I, a long time ago, I dated a guy for many years, like five years, and he loved singing karaoke. And I never, I was like, I am not, uh, uh-uh, no way I am not doing that. And maybe I did it once, but I was like, had many, 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 many drinks. Right. <laughs> and one of the things that, um, I've done in my life is, uh, I mean, I've always been like into health and wellness and stuff like that, but I've really stopped drinking and stopped partying and stuff. And learned how to be me without that, right? That was a crutch for me at one point. And I felt like I needed to be to, you know, to have the drinks in order to really be more seen and stuff. So taking that out, it was like, who am I, right? Without the drinks. Um, but I just like to sing in the car and in the shower and in my house. And I, I was like, I really, it just seems fun. And, and somebody was encouraging me to go and said, you know, I'm just going to go, right? I'm just going to go. And I went to this place that I was comfortable going to. It was a bar, although I wasn't drinking. And I think I sang like a journey song or something. And people were like, you were pretty good. And I'm like, you know, I kind of think I, I did say I wasn't bad. Like I was like, okay, I wasn't bad. <laughs> and then I, I love this one song called The Joke by Brandy Carlisle. And my voice can be a little soprano. So I was like, I think I could do it, but I'm going to, I have a friend who is a voice coach and I said, I'm going to call her and, and just have a session with her. Right. And so she taught me all the ways that I can, um, you know, uh, the exercises that I can do. Yeah. Warm up exercises that I can do. And we did, I felt much more confident singing this one song And, um, you know, she, I didn't even realize you could pull up any song like on YouTube and with the words and all that. So, you know, so I just started to get into that and build a list of what I felt comfortable singing. And then when I, and then I started going out again and realized there was like a whole group that was local here, you know, that met like weekly and did the karaoke and, (laughs) you know, and people were very encouraging and it was, you know, and I was like, tell me the truth. Like, what do I need to change or what do I need to you know, do, or should I not sing that song or, right. And, uh, yeah, it was, it really was a lot of fun and I haven't done it in a while because I've been busy working on the nights now that they've had karaoke, but I'm going to look for it where I'm moving to, uh, moving to an area where there's a lot of culture and a lot of music. And I know they have karaoke, um, you know, somewhere. So I'm going to look It's for it. so much fun. I mean, you're such, I mean, I'm sure so many of my yeah. listeners can resonate with your story because starting that journey of finding the right songs that fit your voice and mm-hmm. um, keeping a little list of them, you know, learning how to get the lyrics on YouTube or even slow down the song on YouTube because there are ways to to change the playback speed that help you to learn a song better. Lots of little tricks oh. like that could make a difference. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for anybody listening, if you'd like to know how to do that, if you're on a phone, there's these three little dots. And when you click on them, um, it'll say playback speed. And uh, 1.0 right. is the, is like 100% of the speed. And then you have 0.75. 0.75 will slow it down. And it will make it easier to catch the little small faster notes. Um, and there's a lot of songs that actually my students even would prefer to sing it slightly slower, like to give it their mm-hmm. own, their own sound, you know, to make it your own. Sometimes slowing right. a song down or speeding it up can be, um, can be, make it more original and more unique and more special. So yeah, that's fun. I have a story from karaoke myself, actually. Um, before I started, you know, my business, I was on vacation holidays with my ex in uh, Malta. And uh, there was karaoke at the local bar. And I said, yep, I'm up for it. Now, at that stage, I knew I could sing because I had sung in choirs and stuff like that. I had this like confidence that wasn't necessarily based on practicing. It was just based on 
usually I can rely on my voice. And I knew I, I could rely on my voice. So I said, OK, I, I love this song by Janet Jackson. I think this is the title. And so I put that title in da, 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 and it came up and it wasn't the right song. <laughs> It wasn't oh, no. like a really slow song, right? So <laughs> I was standing up there and I was like, I'm not sitting back down. I'm not going to like embarrass myself. So I basically pretended I knew <laughs> the melody of the song and I sang basically just reading the words, made it up. Um, Obviously, I didn't get any praise for that performance, but uh, yeah, it was it was kind of it was a fun. It's a fun story to tell. And I've had one other really great experience with karaoke. Um, I did a karaoke in, in Santa Monica when I was on a, a course over there. And I sang a song from Yentl called Papa, Can You Hear Me? And it's really like, it's a powerful song because it's like, you know, it's kind of acknowledging that someone who's who's passed um, can maybe see you and you want them to to know that you still care about them and you hope that they, they, they approve of you and approve your decisions. And at the end of it, um, one of the people who was there said, you know, that girl over there was crying while you sang that song. And I was like, really? So like karaoke, yes, it's a backing track. It's not like a professional performance with a musician, but it can be a very powerful and very fun way to sing so yes i i love that you've done that before and i love i'm gonna ask you to let me know how you get on with your karaoke uh exploration in your new your new um <laughs> community and neighborhood yeah that'll be yeah. fun I will. so will we try some eft tapping right now then Yes, but now I, I, I will admit I, I have a, um, a very basic knowledge of it and I have mm-hmm. used it with students before. So some of you who are listening that have worked with me, I may have used a little bit of this before, but I'd love for, for Meryl to take us through um, how, how do you choose what to say a little bit and, you know, what way would, would be most effective um, and we'll just try it and then we can have a chat about it afterwards as well. Yeah. Um, so you want to start with what your truth is, right? So, you know, I have a fear of being seen, you know, and I have a fear of singing, right? Well, I mean, we'll just start basic. Yes. So we'll start tapping on the side of your hand. And what we do is we create a setup statement here because you want to set into your subconscious exactly where your starting point is, right? Mm -hmm. So you'll start with whatever your fear is right now to be seen singing. So rating it on a scale of zero to 10, come up with your number and um, create your baseline. And then what is your goal? Like what is your testable goal? Um, I want to be able to, you know, freely sing without, you know, feeling any judgment. And then how would you know that you've accomplished that? These are just some things to test back to. Okay. Right. So if anybody's listening, they need to choose a number right now. So if they mm-hmm. have any fear of being seen singing or to being yeah. to singing in front of people, pick the number of how high that fear is in you right now. Okay. When you have it, maybe yeah. you write it down in case you forget <laughs> and let's try it out. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you'll repeat everything that I say, even though it might not resonate exactly with you because we're just, I'm just ad living and making it up. And, um, uh, you know, this is just very general today. Um, but you can definitely, I'm going to ask you to fill in the blanks so you can make it your own. All right. Okay. So even though I have this fear of singing, you want to repeat repeat it? it? Even though I I have this fear of singing, I choose to honor how I feel right now. I choose to honor how I feel right now. So you want to say what you're, you know, you're working on and some acceptance phrase, because that's what EFT is helping you to do is accept where you're at right now. Okay. Okay. So even though I have this fear of singing, even though I have this fear of singing, I choose to acknowledge how I feel right now. I choose to acknowledge how I feel right now. 
Right. And even though I have this fear of singing, even though I have this fear of singing, because I think people will judge me, because I think people will judge me, I'm choosing to accept myself anyway. I'm choosing to accept myself anyway. All right. And then we go to all the other points in the basic recipe, top of the head. Again, it can be one or both hands. Okay. All this fear. All this fear. Yep. Inside the eyebrows. All this fear. <laughs> all this fear. And then outside the eyes. All this fear. All this fear. And under the eyes. This fear. This fear. And under the nose. I just have this fear. I just have this fear. Mm -hmm. And on the chin. This fear. This fear. And then under the collarbone. Take a deep breath in here while you're here. In through your nose. And sigh it out. And staying on this point, all this fear. All this fear. Yep. And then under the arm, it's right under the armpit where it meets your breastbone, right there. All this fear. All this fear. And then just pause, relax, take a cleansing breath. You can close your eyes. All right, and just notice what that was like for you, All right? Did, did it increase your intensity because you're focusing on it? Do you feel more calm? Do you notice where your fear is in your body? Um, mm. You know, I did your number go calmer. down? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So we can do one more round and... If you notice that the fear is somewhere in your body, like your throat feels blocked, which is very common for people that are working on this, or there's tightness in your chest or your solar plexus, like right under your, um, at the right under your chest, you know, is like your third chakra there. Some people feel it there, or there's a clenching in your jaw, or it's giving you a headache or whatever, it's increasing your heart rate, right? Anything. You can attach that to the words as we'll tap. So we don't need to do another setup. It's just right back to the top of the head because it's the same subject. Okay. So still, still have all this fear. I still have all this fear. And if you're feeling better, say, but I'm feeling better. But I'm feeling a little better. Good. Inside the eyebrows. I have this fear. I have this fear. And it's in my, if it's connected to your body somewhere. And it's in my right. tummy. Okay. Outer eye. So this fear in my tummy. It's and whoever's tummy. watching, you just add in your own, right? Mm -hmm. Under the eyes. This fear in my tummy. This fear in my tummy. Yeah. And under the nose. All this fear I have in my tummy. All this fear I have in my tummy. And on the chin. This fear in my tummy. This fear in my tummy. And under the collarbone. Another deep breath in here. Big sigh out. All this fear in my tummy. All this fear in my tummy. And then under the arm. Yep. Still have this fear. Still have this fear. And that's okay. That's okay. Okay. And pausing again and just relaxing. Taking a deep breath. Cleansing breath. So deep breaths really help to move the energy. Staying hydrated and drinking lots of water helps to move the energy. Um, a couple of things that I would recommend is you can tap on the points and just breathe before you're going to sing, because that will help to quell the anticipation of doing it, right? Okay. And then after you sing, if you feel like, oh no, I don't know if I did a good job, right? You can also do the same thing. Just tap around, doesn't even have to be any words, and just kind of quell the numbers down. If you're comfortable using the words, you can say, 
well, I don't know. Even though I, you know, I just sang and I don't think I did a really good job. I, you know, I'm, I'm accepting myself anyway, right? You, you know, you can add in the words and, you know, I'm, I'm feeling some judgment here, right? Yeah. Or beforehand, you can say all this anticipate, even though I'm anticipating having to sing, right? I'm choosing to find peace and clarity now. That could be another okay. acceptance statement. And you can do the same thing. I'm anticipating, I'm anticipating, I'm anticipating, right? <laughs> and and kind of, yeah. you know, talk yourself down that way. Um, I mean, you know, this can be used for anything under the sun. And it's great to wake up with. It's great to go to sleep with. It's, you know, like I said, it's a game changer. <laughs> Wonderful. One of the phrases that I used with some of my students is just this idea of being open to the possibility. Yes. Because a lot of people feel like, oh, I'm just not a good singer. So I kind of try to get people to, um, that's a phrase that they use in EFT as well, right? So mm -hmm. I'm open to the possibility that I'm going to, that I'm a better singer than I think, or that I'm going to enjoy my singing, even, you know, that I'm yes. going to have fun no matter right. what when I sing. Because for yes. me, the enjoyment of doing it is is vital. Yes, yes, absolutely. That's great. Yeah, yeah cool. Anything else that you can tell us about the tapping? I mean, um, I, I heard from one EFT practitioner about tapping just the tips of your fingers. Would you ever recommend that one to people? So if your emotional intensity is above seven, when I work with my clients um, privately, I mean, even if I'm in like a private group or something, you want to get that number down to seven or lower before you really add words to it, because most likely you're just going to increase your intensity. And EFT is all about decreasing, right? We don't want to increase anything. We don't want to, um, you know, uh, trigger you anymore. So, um, so I would say that in and of itself is just a great thing to just doing the tapping and breathing to get the numbers down to seven or below, and then, you know, put the words into it. Um, you had said something about tapping, ask? tapping the fingers. Oh, tapping. Yeah. So that is something that I do is there's a base, the basic recipe is what we did, but then there's also rib points. So right underneath your chest, you have the top of the rib cage there and it kind of points out. So you yeah. can do the rib points there. You can add that. And then oh, you can go into one. the finger points. Yeah. The rib points is a good one. So finger points are right on the outside of the thumb and then the outside of the pointer, outside of the middle finger, the other side of the ring finger, and then inside the pinky. And you want to do seven oh to 20 taps. That's a bit tricky. So the outside. I know. <laughs> so it's right on the, the side. Mm-hmm. Outside. Same spot on the pointer, same on the middle, same yeah. on the pinky. It's just the ring finger is the other side because it's where the meridian points end, right? So, so you would do the same thing. Ring. Yeah. Yep. And then back into this side for the little finger. Yep. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And the, the you would do both hands. Okay. And um, that definitely adds a lot of relaxation and calming to your body if you're if you're really intense mm, that is yeah. absolutely magical it's absolutely crazy that we can change our you know, our neurology and our stress levels so quickly by just tapping our body on our finger or yeah. our face or something and i don't yeah, and think it go ahead i i just i'm sorry i just wanted to add in that um you know, what we just did now is um, a very quick fix and a momentary fix. And, but you do need consistent practice in order to get the permanent long lasting results because your brain is wired right now to have to be in this fear and to only behave in a certain way. And in order to create new neural pathways and rewire the brain, you have to, it takes time. They say it takes about eight weeks to do that. So. That's why I okay. work with my clients for a longer period of time. And do you work time. with clients on a, would you work with them weekly or um, do you take so, them on for a month or two? What way can people work with you? So I have three or six month programs. Three months is usually the healing part. And then the second three months, which people always end up signing up again for the three months anyway. So, you know, but sometimes they have a fear of 
jumping in for the whole six months. But um, so the first three months we meet every other week for 90 minutes because we do deep healing and your body needs time to integrate all of that. So there's time in between. But I also offer Voxer support. So you have me, access to me, almost 24-7 in between the sessions anyway. So it's not like we do a session and then we're done and I don't see you for two weeks, right? You know, I'm there to support you through whatever is happening during in between the sessions. And then the second three months, we do meet every week because that's more goal setting and um, keeping you accountable with a little more practical. We still are using EFT, but we're doing more like activations, affirmations, and really creating a new self image for you of who you want to be. Mm. And that needs more weekly types of sessions. Well, um, so I'm very curious to try does. it myself. I'm, <laughs> it sounds so intriguing, especially on the idea of self image, because we all have our default, what we think about ourselves and how we feel about life. And it's very hard to shift that. And I'm moved, you know, obviously from Ireland to the US. I have to think differently to be able to succeed in an online business um, to be, you yeah. know, living so far away from my family and to see myself as maybe traveling more. So, um, uh, yes, I maybe need to talk to you a little bit more about this, Meryl. <laughs> and I'm sure some of the people listening are going to be very curious about working with you as well. Um, now, just to mention also, I know you have a group program and you have some other ways people can connect with you, right? Yes. So I currently have an EFT for stress release program that is a foundational basics program so that you can learn how to use that in your life to really manage your stress. And then I have a group program going on now that's a, a higher end program very similar to my private programs that I was talking about that three or six months. Uh, it's a three month healing program. Um, but that's group and you know, we can go, we can only go so deep in the group, but we do work on the inner, you know, healing your inner critic and your inner child, uh, as much as we can. And then I'm coming out with a new group program, probably February of 2022. So I'm working on that now. With well, we wish coach. you every <laughs> success with that. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I will you. be including your social media and website links in the notes with the podcast. And um, is there anything that you'd like to say to our listeners before we finish up? What I'll say is that you do have a choice for whatever you want in your life. You just have to get out of your own way. And I would just say, keep following, keep your eye on the goal and don't worry about the how and just keep going and keep going and keep going because you will get there and just reach out for help and support because I mean, I have my own. Yes, you know? definitely. I think sometimes we so. try to make changes on our own and it's um, much, much harder. Um, I actually was um, listening to an audiobook, and the author was saying to gather a dream team, gather mm -hmm. a dream team around you, somebody who believes in your dreams. And if you have to, you know, sometimes your friends and family are going to do that, but not always. <laughs> And no. having a coach or someone on your side who's part of your dream team is very valuable because they don't know the person you've been your whole life. They're not going to be like, oh, you're this type of a person, Aideen, or you're a little bit lazy, Aideen, or, you know, you're a little bit flighty, whatever it is I, that, that I've demonstrated in the past. Um, right. So it's great to work with someone who's a bit more objective. Yeah. And you have to block out those people that are not on your path with you. You have got to learn how to either let those people go or just block out the naysayers, right? You and and keep staying on track to what you want. Beautiful, and I think with singing as well, sometimes we can think, "Oh, I'm only I, I I'm aiming for this amazing performance," but really, if you enjoy singing 
and you can get involved and you can go to karaoke or join a choir or sing around the house. So we don't need to, to be always aiming for perfection. Um, but you know, don't let someone tell you, Oh, why are you doing any, why are you doing singing? Like singing is good for your health. It's good for your Mm -hmm. mind. It's good for your blood. It's good for your breathing. There's always reasons to sing, even if you're not going to be a big star. (laughs) Right. Yeah. It's been such a yeah. pleasure to have you, Meryl. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. And um, I encourage any of my listeners to look up EFT Tapping and find out a little bit more and check out Meryl's website and um, keep singing. We want you, we, we, we're rooting for all of you to enjoy your singing more. So that's it for today. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Bye bye. Thank you.